Welcome to today's Facebook Live. Today we're talking about how to get unstuck with emotions, how to work with stuck emotions, those that just feel like they're all around, they're there, they're stuck, we're stuck with these emotions, using something called resonance sensing. I'm Peggy O'Neill. I founded this group answering the call and the name comes from this uh, what I this call that almost all of us have in our lives where we sense a longing like isn't there something more to life a call to express ourselves in our own unique way or to know who we are what our life's about and that call comes from within so we're answering that call turning and looking within to answer and find out who we truly are so that we can live as who we truly are, which means expressing ourselves fully as who we truly are. And I'm very glad to be with you today as we continue to um, open this understanding of who we are and live as that. And no telling what can happen in the world as more and more of us know that who we truly are is this one being and the nature of which is love, peace, happiness, and fulfillment. If you're here live and you are Sharon, hi, I'm so glad you're here. If you're live, please say hi. And if you're watching this on replay, please put hashtag replay, ask me questions, make comments at any time, and I will address them. Hopefully, I'll be able to see them today. Last week, I could not, so we'll uh, be trying to watch to see. Anyway, all right, here we go. <laughs> Instead of mumbling, we'll get started. So as we work with stuck emotions using resonance sensing, you're going to learn what resonance sensing is, how to get emotions unstuck using a word, a symbol, or an image, and then why helping emotions move out of your body is key to experiencing freedom and fully expressing, well, a typo here, fully expressing who you are. And I'm going to start with that last one. Why helping emotions move out of your body is key to experiencing freedom and fully expressing who you are. So when we're first born, we're one with everything. We don't have a sense of separation. We haven't identified ourselves as separate or other things out in the world as separate. But as we start doing that and labeling things, labeling other people, we have to do that to live in this world the way that it's configured. So there's nothing wrong with any of that. But over time, as we have this sense of a separate self, and we have this identity with ourselves as a separate self, then when things occur in life that we're uncomfortable with, we start creating a story with that uncomfortable feeling. And that starts then uh, creating this emotion, if you will, that can, t that can hang with us our whole lives. We had a traumatic experience when we're two years old and we never have really worked with it. That emotional experience is gonna say, stay stuck in our body until we do something about it. And if it's uh, 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 severe enough, and, and it can be something that happens over time, like in my household, it wasn't the best household to grow up in, but there wasn't like a traumatic event. Instead, it was what I call the Chinese torture kind of traumatic event. It was every day, every day, every day, this home culture that was pretty, um, you know, arguing and um, intense all the time. And so it builds up into this ongoing traumatic experience, if you will. So as we have these various, uh, and, and then it can occur, you know, later in life, we can have maybe a divorce and, and we uh, experience these emotions and they can stay stuck. They can, so how they stay stuck, I'm sure you know what I'm talking about, where events happen and then all of a sudden this old emotion comes up again. Maybe it's fear, anxiety, resentment. Um, uh, annoyance, uh, I'm unlovable, I'm unworthy. Technically, those aren't uh, emotions, but we feel the sense of those things. Well, I guess unworthiness is an emotion, so they are emotions. So that's what I'm talking about. And it can also be um, a, um, uh, a temporary emotion. So again, it's gonna have a story wrapped around it that there's, that there's a feeling. See, all that emotions are are actually vibrations of energy. And if we didn't attach a story to them, they would move right through us. But 
once we attach a story to it, which has something to do with me, I did something wrong, they did something wrong, they hurt my feelings, we attach a story, it becomes kind of cemented in our being, in our feeling, in our bodies. And so now, so why do we want to open those up, help those move along out of our bodies? It's because, and Sharon, I finally remembered to get this on my desk after I moved. Six months later, here it is. But anyway, uh, what we could, how we could truly live is to be like an empty vessel, an empty vessel where consciousness is flowing through us freely and openly and helping us feel free and expressing ourselves as we uniquely really want to express that we're feeling that longing for all the time. But all these emotions that we don't do anything with, they're like these little balls, they build up and notice how much challenging it can be then for for consciousness to flow through us because we've got it's got to go around all these baubles and we're not as free we're not as open because we're kind of clogged up with all these emotions so that's why is that we we want to free that up we can actually be an open vessel an open portal if you will and so the so the more we do what I'm offering today then we feel our we feel free we're more open and then more creativity fun aliveness all of that is available so that's why all right i'll see if there are any questions or comments about that first one okay all right so then the next one is oh well let me so now what re resonance sensing is so resonance sensing is this i follow a woman named stella eisenstein i love her work and she really works with physical issues and, but I noticed she was doing, uh, I think she calls it resonant attention. And uh, so I took one of her, well, two of her courses. And then, um, and then, uh, and she, uh, uh, part of the foundation of her work is the work of Eugene Ginlan. And I happen to have his book uh, from years of coaching and that came into my, um, into my life when I was uh, early on in my coaching career and so but she integrates some of Ginlan's work in there Eugene Ginlan it's called focusing a little book called focusing if you are interested and so between taking her course really the same course I took twice taking her course reading Ginlan's book and plus all the other things that I know about working with emotions and and uh, and freeing ourselves up then I um, put together what I call resonant sensing. So, and so the idea behind it is that, okay, we've got this emotion that seems to be stuck. Why? Because we pay attention to it. We keep naming it. We keep trying to figure out what it is. We, um, we haven't freed ourselves of it. It's still part of our identity. It's still, so it stays around. And really emotions want to be seen. So this is the way that we get to also see the emotion. But the idea behind it is, okay, it's kind of stuck. So what, what's going to help it, at least in, in this premise, this particular way of working with emotions, the idea behind this way of working with emotions, is that we want to find something that resonates with that emotion. So another vibrational tone, if you will, that resonates with the emotion so that then the emotion starts vibrating now you've got some alignment and some movement and now it can move through us. And as I've found and my clients have found, people in the praxis have found, this works very well. And even when I was taking Stella's program and talked to her some, she said, you know, you can use this with coaching. And I was, yeah, I said, yeah, I mean, that's why I was here because I knew that. I sensed that this wouldn't just work with physical uh, ailments or, or, or issues, but it would work with emotional issues. It's the same um, theory behind it. So that's what resonance sensing is. So now we're going to work through the process briefly. I'm just going to go through it with you. You can write each of these steps down and then you'll do this on your own time. We're not going to do it together right now. I'm just going to explain the process to you. So the first step of resonance sensing is that that you you know you, you can either do this just out of the blue say oh, I've got some time right now I'm gonna go see what I can do to move some emotions uh, that the, I experience or it could be something got came to you early in the day some interaction something happened and you could feel this emotional energy and then later in the day 
you when you get home or what whatever then you, you decide okay I'm gonna sit here and work with this because it's pretty intense or because it keeps lingering so the first step is that you create an open and clear an open and clear space let me make sure that you can see this that I've got it yeah good and what do I mean by that I don't mean clear a room or something but an open or clear space within you so that means that that you you, you sort of step back if you will this may sound a little awkward at the beginning you step back you don't focus on the emotion like get into it and why is it happening no it's like you're observing it if you will you step back if you've practiced being aware of being aware that's what I really mean is that you step back into the awareness that you are but if you haven't been practicing that that's okay you just kind of imagine that you're stepping back and witnessing this emotion you're not getting caught up in it so that's the first step is and so uh, and, um, let's see if there's anything else uh, and you don't again don't go into it don't try to move any energy you don't try to do that um, you just allow it okay then the next step is that you allow yourself to experience the felt sense of the emotion the felt sense of the emotion so as best you can don't name it now it took me a while to stop naming it because I've been so conditioned over all the years that you need to name your emotion the more you name it, the more you talk about it, the more you cement it. So I encourage you not to do that. But again, because of our even our cultural conditioning, we've been taught and, and we focus on naming these emotions. So if that happens, you're not doing anything wrong. Just as soon as you notice you're naming it or getting caught up in the story about it, just relax the focus of attention and just allow yourself to sense the emotion. Sense where it is in your body. Where is it in your body? My emotions tend to stay centered in the these these heavy motions in the chest area sometimes the upper arms that's where I feel it the most uh, sometimes the solar plexus so just sense it sense where it is in your body um, again you don't get into it or go into it you just allow it and sense it sense the whole thing the murky discomfort of it of, the, of it so it's a sensing of it it's not a trying to understand it it's a sensing of it so the next thing you do is what I call aligning frequency. Aligning frequency. So as I explained at the beginning, or when I got into this, that there's an emotion that's stuck. Okay, but it's a frequency, it's an energy, it's a vibration. So now we're looking for something that matches that vibration to allow this one to start moving. A great example of this is a guitar, you know, or maybe, I guess it's two guitars. So when two, car, two guitars are near each other and you pluck the string of one, a similar string on another guitar can start vibrating. So that's what I'm talking about, that we're bringing in a, an opportunity for this emotion to experience that we can start helping it move. So what you do then is, okay, you've You've noticed the, 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 the discomfort, the emotion. You're just, again, like you're witnessing it or you're aware of it. And then you can ask, is there a word, a phrase, or an image? That's all you have to do. Is there a word? You can say, is there one that resonates if you want to. But I'm often just in the process. I don't use it like a formula. I, of course, I've done it often enough that I remember, but I just sit there, experience the emotion, and is there an image, a word, or a quality? And it can be strange things. I mean, I've had where an anvil showed up, you know, like an old anvil that you did horseshoes, you know, whatever, you hammered horseshoes on. I've had things like a piano show up. Um, one day I had the word peace show up, which, how could peace resonate with this you know uncomfortable emotion but it did so you, you don't question it you don't try to figure it out what you do though is is once that comes um, uh, once you have that in mind I mean it's some that's come to you that word image or um, uh, or um, quality uh, or sorry word phrase or image or quality then you um, then you uh, yeah so then what you're doing yeah so you're checking to see if it resonates. That's the fourth step. Fourth 
step. So it's another sensing experience, which means that as you're sitting there, and let's say the word piece came up, let's say something, some, one time something red came up. I can't remember what, maybe it was a red key or a red something came up. But anyway, and you just sit with it and you just check. You don't even ask anything. You can, if you do, you do not do anything wrong, but you're just checking. Does it feel like these two are resonating? It's a sensing. It's a very subtle sensing. You're really with this emotion. And, um, and then, in, again, don't logically try to think it through, like peace makes no sense with that, or a horse makes no sense with that. I mean, I've had all kinds of things show up. So, but, and then sometimes I can tell immediately, like, oh, that doesn't resonate. So something just came to mind, it didn't resonate, so you just, okay, let that go. And then, is there another word, image, or quality that comes to mind, that comes, you know, wants to come? And then, check. And if you don't know, just sit with it for a while. You can't do this wrong. You're just trying to help, help release, you know, help, help the emotion wants to, want to help the emotion leave. And a big part of it is just witnessing it, sitting with it, not trying to get rid of it because we don't have that intention to get rid of it. We're just allowing it to move in its own time. Um, and then, then you just hold that. It's like holding, you know, like if you just held some things in your hand. You're just holding it, holding the sense of, I'll use the word peace again, peace, and then this real discomfort I had a couple of days ago. Just hold them together. Let them both be there. And then, um, and then after a while, and it could take a while. I mean, you know, I've sat with that for, say, 20 minutes. Sometimes nothing happens at that point, and after 20 minutes, I just kind of go, I'm done, and I get up and walk away. Sometimes within seconds, emotions move. Sometimes maybe 10 minutes, and something moves. So it's going to move in its own time, but what we're doing is helping it. We're giving it permission. We're seeing it, witnessing it. We're saying it's, it's okay. It's okay to move on. And then you receive anything that came to you. So an insight could come to you. You don't need to ask for insights, explanations, where did this come from? Again, because of all of our conditioning, you might find yourself as you first start doing this, asking where did it come from? But as soon as you do that, try to let that go. But if you, if there's an insight, if there's something for you to know, it'll be revealed. So you can trust that. You don't have to look for it. You don't have to ask for it. So it's just allowing sensing space. So, so you just receive whatever comes to you, if anything comes to you. Um, and then when you're through, you can thank your being and then you move on with the day. Or if you're feeling other, uh, let's say something starts moving and you feel some other emotions arise, you start the process over with those other emotions. So again, the steps are number one, you open and clear a space. Number two is felt sense. Three, you align frequencies. See if it resonates. And then you receive. You can trust. I mean, I've sat with it, like I said, for a while. And then I just feel like I'm ready to move on. And a little bit later in the day, I'll notice it's not there. And this doesn't mean necessarily that it'll be gone forever. Because if it's been with you for many years, 20, 30, 40, 50, 60 years, it may it's probably, if it's an intense uh, experience, it, it's going to come back, but it'll diminish every time. It diminishes, diminishes, diminishes. Usually, sometimes it gets a little louder for a little while. That's just the nature of, of transformation is sometimes when we're making changes, then something, sometimes things can come back more intensely for a while. But, they'll, but then it starts diminishing, diminishing, diminishing. This has been a very profound way for me to work with emotions. So I hope you'll follow through with this and use it. So is there, are there, so I'm through with that. Are there any questions or comments about that? Because I don't see any, just, but last week I didn't either and there were some. So I'm gonna sit here for a second and see if there's anything. I just have a feeling, Sharon, you must be commenting, because I know you do, you participate, but it's not showing up. 
Hmm. Let me try something here. Ah, okay. I, I moved, I clicked on an arrow. Let's see, I can verify that this takes time. Okay, great. Yeah, it's good to get that confirmation from somebody besides just me, somebody that's been working with it. So be patient and, and just know that, um, that over time, then what you do is you're clearing out these marbles of emotion. You clear them out, clear them out. You feel more alive, more free, more open, more loving, more peaceful, more content. And it, it frees you up for, again, ideas, creativity, um, what consciousness is really wanting to express through us. I'll look one more time. Any other comments? All right. Thank you, Sharon, again for being here. If anybody else is here, thank you for being here. And if you're watching this on replay, thank you as well. And I do have the free workshop on Tuesday, 11:30 to 1. I've posted the information here in the group, and would love for you to join us. And we're, it's talking about the one misunderstanding that if we keep, hold that misunderstanding, then it's going to keep us from having the happiness, the love, and the peace. And living the lives that we truly want to live. So I hope you'll join us if you haven't. Or you can come as many times as you want, because this we're doing this kind of work it takes repetition, repetition, repetition. So I hope you'll join us. Bring a friend. That'd be great. You're welcome, Sharon. Thank you. Thank you. Bye. Have a lovely rest of your day.